Alright, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this interior scene. We're mainly going to be focusing on this window. It's going to be some procedural water droplets and condensation. And we're going to do a little bit of things here. And this is a character we're going to get from Mixamo. We won't be modeling this character in case you were wondering that. But we'll be making the majority of the things you see here, especially this window. And here's another render I did, just a different setup of it. But still, we got this window. And I'll show you how to make this little city behind you. And on a side note, this is my Instagram, if you make it. This is my work, and you can send it to me. A lot of you guys have been sending me your work here on Instagram, and I'm loving that. And you can see a lot of my other personal stuff. And yeah, so let's get into it. All right, so we're going to be using Blender 2.8 for this. So right now, right here on your render engine, I'm going to switch to Eevee for the time being because we're going to be previewing our, our materials in Eevee, and we're going to stick to that for now. So first thing we're going to do is add a cube. All right, now we're going to take right here on the transform settings, we're going to take the scale of the X, scale it right about there, and then on these and then on the Z, we're gonna scale it down kind of like that. And this is our room. I'm gonna hit tab right up here. I'm gonna click face select. I'm gonna click this guy, hit X and click faces so that we can set our camera up right here and we can we don't have to worry about that. Now let's take this face. Let's go to edit operator search and type in separate. And we're just gonna take this right here, mesh separate separate selection and so now we're going to take this plane right here and we're going to add a loop cut so go into edit mode and then right here it should say loop cut and we'll put him right there we're doing that because we're going to add a wireframe and we're going to make it look like a window so now we have this object and this object so let's go ahead and add our wireframe on this plane right here so we're going to click wire we're going to click our modifiers and click wireframe and now we have this thing right here I'm going to bring our thickness up and then right here I'm going to uncheck replace original so now we have our window. So this is sort of the inside, this is a little too thick so I'm going to give it 0.1 on the thickness and that looks pretty good. Alright let's set up our camera so shift A and bring our camera right here. I'm going to set it up how I like it, kind of right, right about there. Control Alt 0 and that will snap it to your view. I'm going to hit G and R to sort of set this up the uh, the way I want, just sort of, just kind of rough. All right, now I have my camera set up the way I want. Let's go and add some materials. So I'm gonna hit Z and look dev, and what look dev lets you do if you've never used Eevee, is if you just hit rendered, you we don't have any lights in this scene, so you can't really see anything. But if you go to look dev, right up here, if you click down, Blender gives you these HDRIs that you can cycle through and get these different lighting environments. So I'm gonna give this night one right here just to sort of get the vibe that we're going for. And now I'm going to select the plane with the wireframe here. And let's go to our materials. We're going to click new. And this will be the glass. So scroll down and bring transmission all the way up. And our roughness all the way down. And very, very important if you're using Eevee. Right down here on the bottom, right here on settings. You're going to click that and click screen space refraction and subsurface translucency. And what what's that's going to do, it's going to allow us to see through the glass. Otherwise, we won't be able to see through it. It'll be basically like a window when previewing an EV. All right, next thing we're going to do is add one more material, and that is for our wireframe. So click New here, New, and let's make it metallic and pretty dark. You can see nothing happened. That's because we need to go back to the wireframe and type a material offset of 2, and that's going to give us the second material in our material hierarchy. So if you say you have like 7 and you want to use the third one, you would put material offset of 3, and it'll pick that third material for your wireframe. All right, let's go ahead and get this city. And you don't have to model an entire city. What we're going to do is actually just get a photo, and we're going to make it emissive. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to type in Unsplash right here. And all this is royalty-free photo. So I'm just going to type in City Night. And now we have all these photos at our disposal. So I would go and pick one and just sort of make it look like it's at the angle of a window, maybe like this one, or this one, or this one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this guy, kind of like we're looking out of a window on the floor level. So I'm just going to download it and just save it to wherever you want, and we're going to open it up in Blender. All right, so in order to actually import planes, we need to go back to our edit, and we need to go to Preferences. Right here on Add-ons, type in Image, and then click Import, Export, Images as Planes. Select that little check arrow, and click Save Preferences. Now, if you go to Shift A, right here on Image, Image as Planes, and navigate to where you have it saved. Mine's called Benjamin, so right here. Now, before you click Import, very, very important, right here on the Import Images Planes, click Emit, 
and then you can select the strength here, but we'll be able to edit that later. But I'm going to give it a strength of 30 for now and import. So now we have our image and he's right here and you can see he's emitting light and that's what we want and you can see him. So we're going to scale it up to right, right about there. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, when we render this officially, we're going to be using cycles. So you can go back and preview it in cycles. I'm going to click on my glass here and just give up and just put the roughness up a little bit to sort of preview how that's going to look in the room. So bring up the roughness. I'm going to click rendered and that's how it's going to look. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to go back to Eevee and I'm going to turn off bloom so we can go and make that procedural raindrops and condensation. So right up here, Blender 2.8 has these little presets, these workstations. I'm going to click shading and we're going to go ahead and start working on our window. I have to give a big shout out to String Fairy. He has a tutorial on right here how to make condensation in Blender. And I'm pretty much doing my own version, if not exactly what he's doing. So I got to give credit where credit's due. I've learned so much from him and he's incredible. And I'll be shouting him out again in a future video. So look out for that. But yeah, he's amazing. Go subscribe to him and you will learn a lot about procedural shading from that guy. All right, so first thing we need to do is add a noise texture. So bring that in here, and we're going to plug the noise into the roughness, and you're going to see something happen. All right, now you can just see sort of what's going on, but we want to expound on this. If I were to go to the cycles preview, it's just fully rough. Nothing, you can't see some, You can't see what's going on. In order to expound on what's going on here, we need to add a color ramp. And so what that's going to do is going to take the black and white of this texture, and it's just going to make it more extreme just like that and if we go back to cycles now you can see what's going on right here it's rough right here it's pretty much clear and that's what the noise texture is doing so that's what we're going to be using so that so we're going to be using textures to drive where our roughness and our water drops are going to be located so right now i'm going to bring my detail down pretty far and my scale pretty far up now our issue is that this doesn't look like water condensation like it's raining outside they're kind of going this way and they're just not shaped very well like condensation would be so we need to add two nodes we're going to add a mapping node right here and we're going to plug the vector into the vector of the noise texture and a texture coordinate and we're going to plug the object coordinate into the vector of our mapping so now what we can do we're going to take the scale of the x and just bring it like this and what that's going to do is it's going to sort of stretch it like water. And then right here on the scale, I'm going to bring it back right about there in this area. And then we'll bring the scale just like that. And now it's condensation that's being stretched downward like water is running down the window. And then you can take your color ramp and change it. Now, right now, if I hit, now right now when I go to the cycles render, it's pretty extreme, the, the amount of condensation. So what we need to do is we take the white portion of this color ramp, and if we were to bring it all the way down to the black, it would be completely gone. Or if you want to change it, say you want to add it completely rough but slightly clear, you would take the black portions and bring it all the way up, and now it's completely rough. So just to use that, so we're going to take the white here, and we're going to bring it kind of like that, so it's very subtle condensation. Now it looks much, much better and more realistic, rather than it being all the way white and just completely rough. So it's still pretty see-through, but we can see the condensation. All right, last thing we need to do is add our water droplets. So let's add a bump node, plug the normal into the normal here, and let's get a noise texture, and plug the color into the height, and we're going to see a pretty drastic change in a second. Boom, now it looks like water. We need to change that. So, of course, we need to add another color ramp. Put it right there. And right here on the scale, we're going to bring up the scale up pretty far. And then once we take this black portion right here and scale it down, you're going to start seeing it happening. And then back here on the color ramp, I mean back here on the noise texture, bring your detail all the way down. And now we have those water droplets that we want. I'm going to put the scale at 200 and bring our color ramp kind of like that. And boom, now we have some pretty photorealistic water droplets, completely procedural and perfectly sharp. And now we have a window with condensation and water droplets. And we can zoom out here and we get the full vibe of what's going on. I'm going to put the scale at 300 because they're pretty small. And there we go. We have our window. Our right, next thing we need to do here is add a character. So we're going to go to Mixamo. All right, so Mixamo is a free service that Adobe provides. You do not need a Adobe account. You don't need to pay for anything for this. And you can just go in and select a character. 
So say I picked this character, then I can go over here and click animations, and I can pick an animation right here. So now my character is Samba dancing, kind of goofy. So you can go up here to the search and type in a type of motion you want. Hopefully they have it. And then once you have it, click download, click FBX, and then I, I usually pick 24 frames a second, and you download it. So once you've downloaded your character, you're going to go to File, Import, FBX. And then you'll navigate to where you saved your guy. Mine's called Idle. So I'm going to click him, Import, FBX. And then I can take him, move him around right here. If you want to move him around, click on Armature, and that's going to scale him up and down and moving it. If you click on something else, it'll get all wonky. So I'm going to put it right about there, and I'm going to put it fairly close to our window. And I'm going to hit Z, Rendered. And now we have our guy looking out of the window and we get some good reflections and things like that. All right, so I'm gonna tweak one little thing here. Our room is too reflective. I just want the floor to be reflective. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna bring the roughness all the way up like that. Click on your, click on the cube, click on the cube, go to edit mode and just go here to face select, click the bottom one. Now make a new material, click new. And then we're gonna make this one pretty, pretty reflective and then click assign and it will assign it to the face that that's selected there. So now when you click render, only the floor here is reflective and everything else is good. All right, so I went ahead and changed the image I was using. I wasn't a huge fan of the final result. So it picked this one and it looks great. He's kind of looking out on the city. If you want to see what it looks like, it's this one. But yeah, you can go in and pick an image that you like and use it. And you have this interesting looking floor. Last thing I'm going to do here on the floor for this material I'm going to go back to shading. I'm going to type in a bump node and we're going to get a brick texture. Brick texture. We're going to plug the color into the height. And now we have a nice floor with some brick on it. And that is the final render here for our room. Of course, if you don't like this composition, you can change it and we can get it a little bit closer on our guy and have a better composition and you can see better details in our window just like that. And for the render settings, this is gonna be a pretty hefty render if you're using cycles because this is glass and glass looks best in cycles, but it'll be noisy. So here on the render, we're gonna give it 500 samples and then over here, give it denoising and keep it at the default settings. And then you'll go up here to render, render image. So there you go, if all goes well, you'll get a really cool image. Play around, be creative. I added some lights up here and I did some post-processing in Photoshop, did some dodging and burning and add a little light there. So if you can do that, have fun and thanks for watching the tutorial.